All right. So we have another question where we ask how many possible stereoisomers there are. I've drawn sort of a complicated, for what we've been doing so far, looking uh, molecule on the board. There are two alkenes. There's a bunch of sp3 carbons. So again, to answer this question, how many stereoisomers are there? You need to use the equation almost drawn A. So the equation in the book is 2 to the n, where n is the number of chiral centers. I ask you to throw in the number of isomerizable double bonds. M. So 2 to the n plus m. So you've got two double bonds. Uh, we have to determine, the question you're probably asking yourself is, what's an isomerizable double bond? I'll answer that. And then you have to identify the number of chiral centers. So let's do that. I'm going to put a green star next to uh, the carbons that are chiral. First of all, chiral carbon has to have four different groups bonded to it. So a carbon that's only got three different groups bonded to it can't have four, right? If you've only got three things touching you, you don't have four things touching you. So the sp2 carbon here, the sp2 carbon there, and there, and there, the sp2 carbons are trigonal planar. They have three groups bonded to them. They can't, they can't be chiral. And also remember what chiral and achiral really mean. A chiral molecule lacks a plane of symmetry. A trigonal, a trigonal planar group has a plane of symmetry through the plane. It's planar, trigonal planar. So there's a plane of symmetry through the atoms. So none of the sp2 carbons will be chiral. You can rule them out. This sp3 has, has three uh, protons on it, three hydrogens, so it can't be chiral. A CH2 group, it's a CH2 group, right? It's got two hydrogens on it, it's not chiral. CH2, there you go. The one you really, and you should get to where you can sort of see this at a glance, uh, a chiral carbon's always gonna have, it's gonna kind of be obvious by, it doesn't look like it's got, it looks like it's got a bunch of different stuff on it. So this carbon has an sp2 carbon, an sp3 carbon, a chlorine, and an H. That's four different groups. So we've got one chiral center. So in this case, N equals one. Okay, so now what about this isomerizable double bond stuff? An isomerizable double bond is a double bond that can be cis or trans. So let's fill in the rest of the, the groups here on the double bonds. Put the H's there. Let's take the, the interior double bond first. You could imagine this double bond, you could replace, put the H you could replace the H and the ethyl group, right? Switch those around. If you do that, the two H's are cis to one another. In this double bond, the two H's are trans to one another. That's a cis-trans relationship. That is an isomerizable double bond. An isomerizable double bond is going to have two different groups on both carbons. Okay, so they're on, on this carbon, there's an ethyl and an H. Those are different. On this carbon, there's an H and this is organic chain. Those are different. So this is an isomerizable double bond. We'll put a star next to that. So then what about that alkene down at the end? Is that an isomerizable double bond? Go ahead and ask yourself, maybe hit pause, think, consider whether or not that bond is isomerizable. Okay, if you're back or if you didn't go away, right? I could switch the H and the, the organic group and then what changes? If I switch those two, this H is cis to an H and trans to an H. The organic group is cis to an H and trans to an H. So if I switch the H and the organic group, flip them around, they would still both be, this group would still be cis to an H and trans to an H. Right? There's, if I break the pi bond and rotate and then reform the pi bond, I still have H and H. And so a non-isomerizable pi bond will be a pi bond that's got one carbon that's got two identical groups on it. There's no way to get a cis or trans relationship by breaking them. 
So this is not an isomerizable double bond. Okay, so M in this case turns out to be one as well. And so again, the number of stereoisomers then is two to the one plus one is four, right? Two to the two is four. Okay, I'm gonna erase the words here and ask you to go away and draw the other three stereoisomers. There's only three other ones, right? I've drawn one of the four stereoisomers here. There should be three others. Go ahead and draw them. All right, so what do you think? Well, let's isomerize the double bond first. So CH2, how do I know where to put that? I've changed the carbon chain, right? Look how I've changed the carbon chain. Um, a simpler way to do this, I screwed up. Maybe you didn't screw up. Let's change, let's keep this double bond. I wanted to keep the chlorine the same. So let's switch H and ethyl and have the ethyl come down. All right, so this would be trans, this would be cis. What's the relationship of these two molecules? These two molecules are diastereomers, they're cis and trans. So now that, that's two, there must be two other uh, stereoisomers, and the way you get that is to switch the chlorine. So we can take the trans, let's draw the trans again, and invert the chlorine. All right, so this molecule and this molecule are now what? What is the relationship? Let's, I guess we should number these. What's the relationship of molecules one and three? All right, everything stays the same except the configuration of one chiral center. So one and three are enantiomers. You can convince yourself that by trying to draw the mirror image, but if two structures are exactly the same and the only thing that changes is the configuration of a chiral center or chiral centers, if they all change, then the molecules are enantiomers. Okay, let's draw another cis molecule. I have way too many pins. So I'm drawing the cis, but again, I've inverted the chlorine. This is molecule four now. <laughs> but you can't see that, can you? Sorry about that. So molecule four that you didn't see me draw is molecule two, but I've inverted the chlorine. So again, if two structures are exactly the same, two and four are exactly the same, except for the configuration of the chiral center. So two and four are enantiomers as well. Okay, so what about one and two? Again, one and two, one is trans, two is cis. It doesn't actually matter what the configuration of the chlorine is. A cis-trans relationship can't be a mirror image, right? If you stand in front of the mirror, uh, the left arm is on the opposite side of your body as the right arm. If you stand in front of the mirror, the left arm isn't suddenly on the same side of the body as the right arm. So this ethyl group being trans to the other organic group, that's not a mirror image of the ethyl being cis to that organic group. So two and, sorry, one and two are diastereomers. What about three and four? Same thing, trans and cis, three and four are diastereomers. And then what about two and three? That's the last relationship we have. Once again, cis, cis and trans, so two and three are also diastereomers. Again, in a set of four, four stereoisomers, any given molecule will only have one stereo or one enantiomer, right? So there are four molecules here. Molecule one has one enantiomer, that is molecule three. It's gotta be diastereomers with the other two. If you have 512 stereoisomers, 
one, any given molecule will have one enantiomer and the rest have to be diastereomers. Okay.